رسول الله حبيب الله رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he only humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest one and only glory to him He born in humans to be the best And give his best religion to them Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiyihi wa mustafah wa ba'd My dear viewers, welcome to another live edition of our program, Gardens of the Pious. I would like to send you my greetings with the blessed Eid. May Allah accept from all of us. Today's episode is going to be number 351 in the series of Gardens of the Pious. We will continue explaining chapter number 111, and that is going to be our second episode in the chapter, inshallah. The chapter deals with Babu Adabi Shurbi Wastihbabi Tanafusi Thalathan Kharij al Inai Wakarahata Tanafusi Fil Inai Wastihbabi Idarati al Inai Ala al Aymani Fal Aymani Bada al Mutari. It's a very interesting chapter. It deals with the etiquette of drinking and uh, the preference of breathing three times out of the vessel while drinking. Not drinking only once, drinking twice or thrice, and holding the vessel with the right hand. The first hadith that we have with us today is hadith number 759. It's agreed upon its authenticity, narrated Anas ibn Malik, radiyallahu anhu, anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam utiya bilabanin qad shiba bima'in. وعن يمينه أعرابي وعن يساره أبو بكر رضي الله عنه فشرب ثم أعطى الأعرابي وقال الأيمن فالأيمن متفق عليه سبحان الله أنس ابن مالك رضي الله عنه May Allah be pleased with him and all the companions of the messenger of Allah peace be upon him narrated that a cup of milk which was mixed with water was brought to the messenger of Allah peace be upon him while there was a Bedouin on his right hand side and Abu Bakr Siddiq on his left hand side so the messenger of Allah peace be upon him drank and he then gave it to the Bedouin and said the right hand to the right hand the hadith is collected by both Imam Bukhari and Muslim. It is agreed upon its authenticity. The word she babi ma'in means it was diluted with water. One may say, isn't it true that it is forbidden to dilute the milk and the honey and that is considered some sort of cheating? Absolutely, that if you dilute it before you sell it. So that the buyer may think this is pure milk or this is pure honey while it is diluted with 30% water or sugar uh, or even 40% or even 50% of water and they put gelatin, water and gelatin. So the milk would appear as if it is like pure milk while it is not. That is called cheating. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Man ghasha falaysa minna. He who cheats, he who deceives in selling, in buying, in any transaction, is not one of us. Does not represent Islam. Does not represent Muslims. He is not behaving as Muslims. Subhanallah. So why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here was drinking milk which was diluted and mixed with water? You know, at home, you're absolutely free to drink milk uh, with tea or tea with milk or any other drink, club with milk, uh, cinnamon with milk. You dilute it with milk, you dilute it with water, you put evaporated milk, you put milk powder because 
you know what you have so you're diluting it in order to uh, to suit you better you know as a consumer that's perfectly fine but to dilute it in order to sell it and increase the volume while it is diluted with water this is absolutely haram and we have a very interesting story of Umar ibn Khattab and the milk seller as he was patrolling the city and he heard a conversation between a mother and her daughter. The mother is known as Ba'i'atul Milk or the milk seller. The mother might ask her daughter, do not forget to dilute the milk with water in order to increase the volume. So the daughter said, I have heard the Amir al muminin the leader of the believers, Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, on the member as saying that uh, you should not dilute milk with water, this is cheating. So she said, well, Umar cannot see us. We are in the privacy of our house, so we can do whatever we want to do. And people will not figure it out. So she said, well, if Umar cannot see us, Umar's Lord can see us. This is a word which impressed Umar al-Khattab so much that he marked down this house and he went during the day in order to get this girl married to one of his sons. And later on, out of their offspring, there will be Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. May Allah be pleased with him and all the uh, companions and the tabi'in. So in this case, rule number one, it is absolutely forbidden to mix the raw material with something to dilute it. Then you sell it as if it is pure. That applies to the perfumes, to the musk. A friend of mine who used to be a student in the University of Medina and during summer he used to work at some of these perfume shops and he said you know they they cost a lot especially the oud he said that it is diluted with glycerin diluted with oil so it is not 100 percent not even 50 percent especially when they put uh, them on sale this is called what cheating and the Prophet said, Man ghasha falaysa minna. You increase the volume and decrease the price a little bit in order to tempt the customers to buy from you. Hmm? And as a result of that, you cheated them. Your earning is haram. How much haram in your earning is in proportion with the amount of uh, dilution that you have induced in the raw material, whether it is perfume, whether it is honey, or milk. May Allah guide us what is best. But at home, you feel free to do whatever you want to do. People when they grind the meat, they mix it with rice, they mix it with other stuff in order to increase the volume. Okay, they have a bunch of kids, so they seem like they're eating meat while they are eating meat with other uh, stuff, ground meat with rice. No problem, this is at home. You know, this is for you. You're not selling it to others as if it is pure or 100% meat or honey or milk or perfume. So we have learned the word Shiba Bima in here. Everybody knew that they diluted it with water for a reason or another. Then he said, وَعَنْ يَمِينِهِ أَعْرَابِي Arabi is a Bedouin. And the Bedouins back then were kind of worthless. Nobody would even care about them. Okay. So he's coming to learn from the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. And he's sitting, he happened to be sitting to the right hand side of the Prophet ﷺ. And to his left hand side was Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Who's Abu Bakr? He was the closest friend to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi And the greatest man in this ummah after Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Whom the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said that everyone, everyone, have done me a favor, we compensated him for that favor. Except for Abu Bakr, only Allah will compensate him for what he did for Islam and Muslims. May Allah be pleased with him. Abu Bakr Siddiq, the man whom the eight gates of heaven will call upon him, will compete over him, come and enter Al Jannah through me. Abu Bakr Siddiq, the first in the list of the ten heaven pound companions, radiallahu an. Abu Bakr Siddiq, whom the Quran made mention and referred to him several times. Yet, there is a bad one. But he's sitting to the right hand of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, what does it mean? There the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was giving the milk. He drank. And 
if he was to give it to somebody else and pass it on to somebody else, it should be given to the greatest, the, the following greatest. It would be given to Abu Bakr Siddiq. But since Abu Bakr was to his left and the bad one was on his right, the Prophet ﷺ did not hesitate to put it in the hand of the Bedouin. Why? Because he's sitting on the right hand of the Prophet ﷺ, on his right. And he said, Al Aymana Al Ayman. So this is the Islamic protocol. This is the Islamic etiquette. You begin by the right hand. We have learned before when you hand over, when you give somebody anything, you give it with the right hand. When you receive it, you receive it with the right hand. This is what the Prophet ﷺ uh, taught us. I want you to imagine Abu Bakr al-Siddiq was a master who used to buy the slaves to set them free for the sake of Allah, is sitting in the same sitting with a Bedouin, with somebody whom before Islam used to have no capacity in the community whatsoever. They were very, uh, you know, um, they were mistreated to the point that they were not even considered as present. That's why the Quran forbade the Prophet Sallallahu of even thinking about accepting the proposal of the Meccan chieftains when they said that a point for us a sitting where the slaves, the servants, and the bad ones would not share with us the same meeting. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تُطِعْ مَنْ أَغْفَلْنَا قَلْبَهُ عَنْ ذِكْرِنَا وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَاهُ وَكَانَ أَمْرُهُ فُرُطًا Allah the Almighty commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as follows, وَاصْبِرْ نَفْسَكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَدَاتِ وَالْعَشِيرِ Be patient and hang around whom? Those who invoke Allah in the morning and the evening. Let it be a bad one, let it be a master, it doesn't matter. But as for those people, do not listen to them. Do not even think about their proposals. All of that we learn from this scenery where the bad one was sitting to the right hand of the Prophet ﷺ. And after he drank, he handed it over to the person on his right, even though he was not as great as Abu Bakr Siddiq. Why? Because right side comes first. This is Islamic etiquette. We happened yesterday to have a dinner with some diplomats. Okay, and uh, since it was in a big hotel, and we were sitting on a round table, and the waiter was serving the food, putting in the plate of each one. So I was looking for uh, the utensils, the fork. So when I stretched out my hand to pick a fork, it was on my right hand side. The waiter said, no sir, it is to your left hand side. So. The one on my right hand side belonged to the person, to the diplomat who was sitting on my right hand side. I mean by mentioning that, that people in their protocols, in their life, they have certain etiquette. They eat with the left hand, and the set of the silver is to the left hand, not to the right hand, and so on. We as Muslims, we have our Islamic etiquette, which we are very proud of. We eat with the right hand, we say Bismillah in the beginning of eating, and once we finish, we say Alhamdulillah. We thank Allah for providing us, whether with the food or with the drink. And also, if I'm going to, like, you know, I, I, I got the bowl of soup or the salad, I have served mine, and now I want to pass it to somebody else, it must be right to right, right hand to right hand, and so on. And the sit is to your right hand side. This is my Islamic etiquette. This is what the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam have taught us, and he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Al aymana fal ayman." The right hand to the right hand, the right hand first, then you pass it on to the person on your right hand. Well, somebody may say, "Well, he was in the process of teaching, and Abu Bakr Siddiq wouldn't take it personal, and he was a great companion." But the following hadith is such an amazing hadith. It is also agreed upon its authenticity, and Rasulullah sallallahu teaches us that every member in the community have rights, even the minors, even the children, even if they are under the age of puberty. Okay, rights are rights, duties are duties. So in this hadith, Sahl ibn Sa'd al-Sa'idi radiyallahu anhu narrated 
أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أتي بشراب فشرب منه وعن يمينه غلام وعن يساره أشياخ فقال للغلام أتأذن لي أن أعطي هؤلاء فقال الغلام لا والله لا أوثر بنصيبي منك أحدا فتله رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في يده The hadith is agreed upon its authenticity Before I share with you the meaning of this hadith This hadith is one of my favorite One of my most favorite ahadith It reflects simply the beauty of Islam And the rights of every member in the community Men, women, children, masters, servants, rich and poor Everybody have rights in a Muslim Ummah And everybody should be given their due rights Subhanallah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting and to his right hand side there was a young boy my dear respected Indo-Pak brothers and sisters the word Ulam is one of the ambiguous words where you guys normally translate it as a slave even those who translate the Quran from this background right away when they say when they look at the word Ulam they translate it as a slave which is not true if you consider it in Urdu as a slave, this is not true. The ghulam here happened to be a master. The ghulam happened to be Abdullah ibn Abbas. May Allah be pleased with him and his father, the Prophet's cousin, who belonged to a noble family, the family of Quraysh. And he is one of Alu Bayt al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May the peace, peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad and his family members. So ghulam does not necessarily mean uh, a slave and also jariya it rather refers to a boy under the age of puberty and jariya refers to a girl under the age of puberty okay so rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam was given a drink of water of milk whatever fashariba minhu he drank to his right hand side subhanallah there was a boy and on his left were elderly people, ashyakh. So he said to the boy, would you please permit me to pass it on to the elders first, because he was sitting to his left. So the boy said, O Messenger of Allah, listen to it in Arabic first. La wallahi, by Allah, no way. La uthiru binasibi minka ahada. I would certainly not give preference to anyone in anything that might come to me from you whatsoever. So the Prophet ﷺ simply He handed over the drink to him, the milk or whatever, to the young boy who happened to be Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhumah. Oh man, the Prophet ﷺ was not only teaching and inspiring the boys to be responsible and to feel that they mean a lot and they have a great value in the community that they are sitting with the ashaykh, with the chieftains. They are sitting with the elders. Why? To learn from them, to pick from their very uh, adult conversation, from very mature conversation, to benefit out of that. And awfully the Prophet ﷺ would do that. And many a hadith have been narrated to us by young boys how the Prophet ﷺ had been teaching them aqidah, belief, and monotheism. How the Prophet ﷺ was teaching them true tawakkul and yaqeen. How the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was teaching them the etiquette of eating, of drinking, of keeping the secret, and so on. He paid a lot of attention to the youth ﷺ. And he admired them in more than one narration ﷺ. Now, we mentioned in the previous hadith there was a Bedouin. So what? A servant. So what? A slave. He is sitting on the right hand side. Please, Bismillah, you begin first. But Abu Bakr, well, the right comes first. Even though Abu Bakr is there, but he's sitting to the left. So he irritates right to left. The second, now a young boy. The Prophet, Subhanallah, 
Uh, this hadith isn't only about teaching us that we should give the person to your right only. No, 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 no. This is just one of many great and deep meanings you can learn from this hadith. Does Rasulullah sallallahu need to take a permission from this young boy? Of course he doesn't. So why did he do that? He's making him feel responsible. He's making the young boy feel like he is equated to the adults. You have a right. I'm not going to confiscate your right. Would you please allow me to pass it on to the elders first? And listen to the magnificent reply. La wallahi, I swear to Allah, I shall never do that. <coughs> Why not? <coughs> Excuse me. He said, I would certainly not give preference to anyone over myself in anything that comes to me from you. Su'ru Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya'ani, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had just drank from this pot. Ya'ani, his lips were on the lips of the pot. And now, by the time it rotates, you know, and on the ashyakh or the elders, by the time it comes to him, many lips will be put on it. He said, no, 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 no. no. This is such a great honor to drink soon after you, to drink from the same spot and from the same drink before anyone else. How can I give anyone preference to myself over that? You know, if it was a matter of anything pertaining to the dunya or even food and drink, yeah, but because you happen to drink first, so it's such an honor for whoever will drink after you, and that's why I'm not going to give up on that, right? I'm not going to give uh, my right away or grant any person preference uh, over myself in this regard. This young boy happened to be Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma. So brothers and sisters, two beautiful ahadith in this regard. And inshallah, after we take a short break, we'll resume with some more etiquette. Please stay tuned. Rasulallah, Habiballah. Rasulallah, Habiballah. messenger after a messenger after a messenger ending with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Prophet Nuh alayhi salam Prophet Hud alayhi salam Prophet Salih alayhi salam Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam Prophet Musa alayhi salam Prophet Isa alayhi salam and our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a series of the lights of guidance discussing the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala learning from their lives going through this exciting, amazing, informative, special journey with the lights of guidance on Huda TV, where we will discuss together, where we will live together with each and every prophet in an amazing episode, learning from them, pondering upon their experience, meditating upon their life, relating to it, and getting lessons that affects us in our life to be the servants and the followers of those prophets and the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be discussing this series of lights of guidance. So be with me and join me in this beautiful series so we learn together and we pass it through the next generation. So please join us on Huda TV, I will be with you in this amazing journey. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. revealed the Quran in seven different ways of recipe. Similarly, Maryam السلام, she's a woman by herself. She doesn't even have a husband who's ever touched her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted a child to Maryam السلام. Look at that. He said that, how will I have a child? How will I have a child whilst I've never even been touched by a man? One of the unique things about the story is 
that it's not like Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses. Can you imagine that Umar al-Khattab hasn't heard these verses? He became sick from the effect that this ayah ended up having on his, on his mind. are not positive, you cannot motivate. Absolutely. If you are not positive, you cannot recognize, you cannot even look for the good things. Absolutely. Unless it is in your hmm. heart, you hmm. cannot practice it and exercise it with other people. <coughs> the meaning of the word La ilaha illallah to everyone, to all the people who are around him. Right. As many people as he can. So this is the mission. Mm -hmm. But this concept solves many problems. Yes. Whenever you visit a place that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sitting in, mm. if you don't know him, you will never be able to say that this is Prophet Muhammad or this is Prophet Muhammad. Tell me about a person in this world who does not need mercy. Mm. Mercy is a key way of or course. a key word for healing the hearts of human beings. What happens is they get so many rejections that they feel so bad about themselves they don't know that what's been rejected now is your current skills your current experience which by time and effort can develop yeah. so primarily you are going to you are doing this job so perfect it and this is part of our great religion is perfection mm. and perhaps mm. there is another chapter about this perfect right. your work give mm -hmm. the right to the job that you have Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, in this segment, inshallah, uh, we are going to present a new chapter. It's very interesting. Uh, it deals with the etiquette of drinking from a vessel based on the nature of the vessel. Sometimes you have a vessel which is like a water skin with an opaque outer part so it's hard to tell what is inside it. You filled it with water, correct but you never know whether it has been polluted or an insect fell in it. Uh, especially if you leave the mouth of the water skin untied or open sometimes. Also, there are some pots made of pottery. People leave them in the streets, in the masjid, in their vehicles. Uh, they cool off the water a little bit. So you don't know the ingredients, what is inside. Okay, There is water. But there is a possibility that an insect may have uh, fallen into it. So the Prophet وسلم, in this chapter is abhorring drinking from the mouth of the water skin. The disfavor of drinking from the vessel directly and proving that it is not forbidden. Wait a minute. Forbidden or not forbidden, it is disliked. We learned in the principles of jurisprudence, whenever there is a command, it, it, it benefits the obligation. Unless, if there is an indication that it waives the obligation to mere recommendation. To mere recommendation. Such as the duha prayer. If you listen to the ahadith of the duha prayer, you may think that it's a must. But because of other ahadith, and how the Prophet ﷺ used to skip it sometimes. Now we know that it is simply an emphatic sunnah. It is not obligatory. Similarly is the witr prayer. According to the vast majority of the Muslim Jews, with the exception of Imam Hanif, of course. Let me remind with our phone numbers for those who would like to drop us a call or ask a question. Area code 002 then 0100546 and the other number is the second line is 002 area code then 0238551321 the email address is gardens at huda.tv also whenever there is nahi 
for, uh, prohibition. Right away, it benefits. It is forbidden. It is not allowed to do it. Unless if there is in another hadith through saying or an action of the Prophet وسلم, or approval like somebody did it in his presence where he let go and he did otherwise. So we benefit from that, that the combination of all these ahadith that this prohibition was not for mere forbidding the practice or the thing. Rather, it is to dislike it. It is better not to do it. We spoke about drinking while standing. How the Prophet وسلم, there are a bunch of ahadith in this regard. The Prophet وسلم, said, if you drink while standing, Satan has been drinking with you. If you drink while standing, you better vomit what is in your stomach. But subhanAllah, in, in another hadith, Abdullah ibn Abbas said, I handed over the water of Zamzam to the Prophet وسلم, after performing tawaf and he drank while standing. So a combination of um, you know, the, the ahadith which forbids drinking while standing and the actual doing occasionally of the Prophet ﷺ indicates that it is better to sit down whenever you want to eat or drink. It is disliked, but sometimes you don't have a room to sit down. You don't have a chance to sit down. Like a speaker is giving a speech. Somebody is performing tawaf. So you can drink while standing. It's okay, but it is better. The preference is to sit down. The hadith... Uh, that we'll be discussing in this chapter, deal with the, as it appears, okay, from the beginning, the apparent meaning, that it is forbidden to drink from the mouth of the vessel directly. Then afterward, we will learn that it happened that the Prophet ﷺ drank from a mouth of a vessel, a water skin, and he was standing too. We'll see the combination of this hadith in a little bit after this call, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Hello from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum. Yes, uh, Sheikh, I just want to ask if I can pass tomorrow, Thursday. It's already okay to pass tomorrow, inshallah. Yes. Because my mother passed away three days ago. May Allah have mercy yeah. on her. Yes. yes, thank uh, you. Ayyamu Tashriq, okay. Ayyamu Tashriq are over already. The Eid day and the following three days are known as the following three days are known as Ayyam al Tashriq, which is also count among the Eid days. That it is forbidden to fast during those four days. But afterward, you're simply permitted to fast on Thursday. It is highly recommended to fast on Thursday. Include your uh, late mother in your dua at the time of breaking your fast. May Allah have mercy on her. Thank you, Hella, from the KSA. So the first hadith we have, it's a hadith that is agreed upon its authenticity. Hadith number 761 on Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu qal, Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an ikhtinaathi al-asqiyah. Muttafaqun alayhi. Very interesting. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon, forbade the turning of the water skins upside down and drinking from their mouth. Okay. Do we have a water skin? Do we have an image of qirba uh, or jirra? I guess we do. What is a water skin? You know, after the, in the past, and nowadays, those who've gone for hajj or umrah, mashallah, they see the zamazima, the water bearers who give you zamzam water to drink, it is maintained in a water skin. And the mouth of the water skin is like a muzzle made of copper or metal. So they pour the water and subhanAllah it is very fresh. They used to keep the water after the slaughter, the goat particularly, they would uh, tan the skin, okay? And then they would stitch it to make it like a water skin. And they keep the water in it. It would be hanging uh, from the roof, from a branch of a tree, from the wool in order to keep the water cool and maintain its freshness. So the Prophet ﷺ forbade ikhtinathu al-asqiyah. Let's say, let's see if we have the water skin. People, while the water skin will be hanging from the wall or from a, a branch of a tree, they will flip it upside down and they put the mouth of the water skin 
in their mouth and they keep drinking and sometimes on one breath we have learned that it is dislike to forbid or uh, to drink all at once it is better to breathe outside the vessel and to take a break to drink twice not to drink once because this is similar to uh, how Satan drinks also Yani, pretty much this is like an image of a water skin, okay? So imagine when this water skin has maybe like 10 gallons of water, and you flip it upside down, and the water pours all of a sudden, and it can shock you, it can shock the person. The Prophet ﷺ have taught us prevention is better than cure. This is one thing. And the second thing, since it is opaque, you don't know the, what is in it, Maybe somebody happened to drink and left the mouth untied. You know how the Prophet ﷺ uh, commanded us in another hadith, أَوْ كُسِّقَاء يعني Whenever you go to sleep, tie the mouth of the qirba, okay, or the vessel, the water skin, lest an insect, a scorpion, may crawl into it, and it becomes very problematic, and it happened. It happened at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and it happened once I was uh, in Texas, uh, every morning after I pray Fajr, I go to this gas station, also grab my coffee, and uh, there was, um, you know, a white American guy. Every morning he would come and fill up his uh, uh, um, um, cup of coffee and go. So he was gone, like I haven't seen him for a month or two. Then all of a sudden, he came back, he showed up again. So the salesperson was asking him, long time no see, what happened to you? So he narrated to him the story in front of me. So I heard what happened. He said that he's like a cowboy. And he wears those kind of long boots that reaches up to the knees, made of genuine skin, uh, leather. So he said, subhanAllah, he got up in the morning, he put his boots on, and all of a sudden something stink. What happened is there was a scorpion in the boot and he got bitten by a scorpion and he almost died. SubhanAllah, Allah saved his life. They ran him to the ICU and uh, emergency and so on. So here is one of the reasons why the Prophet Wasallam said so because at during his life, somebody happened to drink like this from the water skin. The mouth was open previously and a scorpion fell in it. So he happened to drink uh, the scorpion along with the water. And uh, I told you the experience. This is a typical water skin, but this is a little one, okay? Like a water canteen. So if the mouth is untied or if it is left open, it's very easy. Okay, Sheikh, what about this? Like, uh, of course, we removed the name brand. So uh, I see the bottle of water is transparent. Can I drink from the bottle directly? Of course. Why? Because I can tell there is nothing in it. Okay. So the dislikeness or the disfavor is relating to the danger. The Prophet ﷺ is instructing us that Islam is not a religion that only regulates how to pray and the rituals and the ibadat, but also the eating habits, the drinking habits, shaking hands, the greetings, dealing with one's spouse, dealing with one's children, in-laws, uh, having an intimate relationship, business transaction, everything. Everything. It deals with everything in your life, literally. It does not exclude anything. It doesn't say only deal with the masjid. It deals with politics. It deals with who should be the leader, who should be the uh, emir, who should be elected, who should be re representing the ummah. Uh, and even impeaching such person, all of that. So when you have a bottle like that where the vessel is very transparent, it is okay to drink from it directly because there is no risk. Okay? So ikhtilasul azqiya is to drink from the mouth of... Uh, there is also, uh, I hope that we have an image of a water pot or jirra or qulla which is made of pottery. That applies to the same. And there are, you know, in some, uh, until recently, they used to keep them in front of the masajid and so on. So when the person says, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, 
what happens is the body is opaque if it is not covered it's very possible that an insect may fall into it and you happen to swallow it along with the drink okay also because this is a big vessel which is not only a sip or two like a lot of people will get to drink out of it so your mouth and the smell of your mouth maybe the saliva as well remains on the mouth of the vessel and somebody else will get to drink after you is kind of disgusting to others that's why the prophet sallallahu abhorred or disliked ikhtinathu al asqiya the following hadith is narrated by abu huraira radiyallahu anhu qal naha rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam an yushraba min fi siqai aw al qirbati muttafaq alayh same thing hadith number 762 abu huraira radiyallahu anhu narrated that the messenger of allah peace be upon him forbade drinking directly from the mouth of a water skin or the water containers the hadith is agreed upon its authenticity and we have just learned that applies to what if the vessel is opaque you cannot tell what is in it there is a possibility that an insect may have fallen into it also if it is big enough that many people do drink out of it so it doesn't become too good to drink and others and others and sometimes it's contagious it transfers and transmitted uh, transmits diseases simply as a result of the remains of your saliva on the mouth of the vessel last hadith in the chapter is collected by Imam Tirmidhi it is narrated by Ummu Thabit Kapshata binti Thabit Ukht Hassan ibn Thabit Sha'ir al-Rasul May Allah be pleased with him Hassan ibn Thabit is a very famous companion and he was a great poet his sister Kapsha binti Thabit May Allah be pleased with her um, said دخل علي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فشرب من في قربة معلقة قائمة فقمت إلى فيها فقطعته رواه الترمذي very lovely she said the messenger of Allah peace be upon him visited me once and he found a water skin hanging from the ceiling from the wall so the Prophet ﷺ drank some water from the hanging water skin while he was in a standing position. Oh man, two violations? No, he is presenting that it is permissible. But the preference is not to stand, not to drink directly from the mouth of the water skin. And when you want to drink, you sit down. This is what is better. But what did Kapsha bin Thabit do? That's another very interesting, um, you know, reference in the hadith. She said, so I got up and I cut off the mouth of the water skin. Why? She cut off the mouth of the water skin to keep it for herself as a source of barakah, blessings. The lips of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, were put on the mouth of this water skin. So she doesn't want anyone to mess it up after him. She wants to keep it for herself that Rasulullah sallallahu drank from here so she cut off the mouth of the water skin to keep it for herself every now and then she can use it herself subhanallah that reminds us with the uh, stance of uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas when he refused to pass on the drink to the elders why he said that I wouldn't give preference to anyone with your leftover O Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam brothers and sisters very interesting hadith and also in the following um, episode, we'll get to speak about some more etiquette with regards to eating and drinking. And uh, we will learn that what the Prophet ﷺ have been teaching us is for our own benefits, for our own virtues. Some of these teachings, inshallah, next episode, we'll find out that uh, the modern medicine and researchers have proven that whatever the Prophet ﷺ said was absolutely correct and that was more than 1400 years ago. So, so wait until next episode inshallah to discuss that. Until then, I leave you all in the care of Allah. I will say this and 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 I
رسول الله حبيب الله الله our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he only humans to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he only humans to be the best and give his best religion to them so why did they ignore that forgetting all about it in paradise worshiping cows fire and stones selling the best with the cheapest price so why did they ignore that forgetting all about hell and paradise worshiping cows fire and stones selling their best with the cheapest price Allah.